What is going on, Panthers Nation? Carolina Dad here, your host of the Two Growls, One Roar podcast. Welcome to a special Black Friday edition. Did not plan this pod. You can even see right now, if you're watching the video, I am standing up. That is because we had Thanksgiving yesterday, in-laws were in, had a great time with family, but we had to move a few of the chairs downstairs, and one of the chairs that we moved is my podcast chair, which isn't a great chair, but it was a chair that we had to put at the table to make sure everybody had enough seats to sit in. I just put Pearson down for a nap, and then I was like, well, it'd be a really good time to record a podcast or a mini podcast, primarily because I want to apologize. The last two podcast recordings, the recordings themselves have been okay. Well, I take that back. The audio was really bad. Two, two episodes ago, the video messed up this past episode, so I wanted to test this back out and make sure things are working, and it's Black Friday. Hey, before I get started, I want to let you know that hoodies are available at $10 off, $38 on the Facebook and Instagram shop. Just go out there. You can place your order, ship it directly to you. Very easy process, so I want to let you know I'm going to keep that running for about a week. Jumping in, I'm going to play a clip of the Frank Wright presser from today that's getting you ready for the Tennessee Titan games, and then we will digest. Here you go. uh, Happy Thanksgiving. I wanted to ask you what your biggest concern is heading into this game. Listen, we're focused on execution in all three phases. Um, Obviously, particularly on offense, um, you know, really want to continue to you know, build off the success we had in the running game. Uh, you know, it's no secret we want to run the ball, but we want to be balanced. Um, we, we, you know, we want to be able to be balanced. You know, we want to be able to mix up tempos. We want to be able to, you know, try to keep teams off balance. We need to be more productive on offense. We know the challenge in front of us. This is a good defense we're playing. They're particularly good up front. Uh, statistically, they've been very good against the run. Physical, um, you know, mix up their coverage as well, disguise well. Um, it, it'll be a good test for us, but uh, the challenge for us is uh, is really execution and produce at a higher level on offense. Thank you. We know that Frank Reich is the play caller. We also know that he took over the play calling from Thomas Brown after three games when he gave it to Thomas Brown. And now we're back in the Frank Reich offense, Okay. It's been established. So what he talked about there in this presser was this idea, one of execution, like, yeah, I'm all for executing in all three phases of the game. Offense needs more execution than anything else. There's a funny clip. I think it was Notre Dame coach a while back. I can't even remember where he was like, I'm in favor of execution. And they just clipped that that part out. Anyways, I see it on the sports clips. Not that form of execution. He is not in favor of that. But Reich talks about wanting to be balanced. And so you sit there and say, yeah, that sounds great. Sounds great on paper. And you go back and look. I tweeted this out a few days ago. It's perfect for the show. The Panthers throw the ball almost 64% of the time. That's third in the league. The only teams that pass the ball more are the Bengals and the Commanders. And we know that the Commanders, and I don't know how it shook out after yesterday, did have the leading passer in Sam Howell. We know the Bengals have Joe Burrow. Who do the Panthers have? Bryce Young. Coming into this season, I talked about if this team was going to be successful, it would not be because of Bryce throwing the ball all across the field, not because of a lack of weapons. That wasn't my initial thought, but just like he's not going to be the gunslinger, at least in year one. You want to rely on the run. And Reich wants to talk about that. So we are throwing the ball 64% of the time, which means we're running the ball 36% of the time. 36%. And he wants to talk about being balanced. He's the play caller. Like, then make the change. Call more run plays. We saw a lot of successful runs in the first half with Chuba Hubbard, with Miles Sanders coming alive. But here's, here's where I take this. And it's a quote by Albert Einstein, Insanity doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that's what this offense is right now. It's pure insanity because what we are doing 10 games in is not working. At 1-9, and change things up. And there will be changes 
on the offensive line this week, whether, I mean, by default of uh, Austin Corbett being out for the year, which is very unfortunate news. And I can't remember if that news happened before or after I recorded. He is out. And I think it was out. That lends itself to either Chandler Zavala. Well, Chandler Zavala will be one of the starting guards, likely left guard, and opening up a spot at right guard for either Cade Mays or Nash Jensen. I'm in favor of moving Bozeman over to, to left guard, Mays running center, and then whether you want Zavala or Jensen at right guard, change it up. But here it is. At 1-9, we have two rookie guards or Cade Mays and a rookie quarterback. Reich should look to get this percentage down to 55%, around 55% passing. We don't have a deep threat, and the only hope at getting defenses to bite down is running the ball. And he talks about successful running attacks being able to open up the pass game with play action. And I don't even know what type of play action he's talking about because we do not run play action. Miles averaged a little over five yards per carry in the first half last week. Chuba Hubbard averaged seven yards per carry. Yes, seven. So how about we just take a page out of the Steve Wilkes book, feed these running backs the rock, and just get out of the season healthy and prepare for next year. That's all. That's my proposal. That's my proposal for the rest of the season. It's my proposal for this offense because this offense isn't it. We understand that we don't have the personnel. We understand the rookie offensive line and the pieces that are there and that it's just not built for success in Bryce Young. And I joked about you know not putting Bryce out there. I know they're going to put him out there, right? Kind of shut that down, which is fine. It's kind of just speculation that you would say that you would shut down Bryce for the remainder of the year. But at this point, what else? What else is there to do than change up the style? And we do a lot of one back. That's what we are as a one back team. You may throw in a LaVisca, you know, in the backfield every now and then or something like that. But having a true lead block or I formation or power plays with a lead blocker, whether it's a tight end or a fullback, isn't in our scheme. And you're putting our personnel in, in Positions to where it doesn't really fit the skill set that we have. You know, you throw have Christian McCaffrey back there. Of course, that's something you can do. You don't really need the lead the lead blocker with him. But you know, not to knock on Chuba or Miles, they're just not him. Yeah. Anyways, you know, we we're sitting over dinner at uh, this afternoon talking about the Christian McCaffrey trade because the you know, family knows that I do the the show and. They always like to ask, you know, or at least my father-in-law, like, "Hey, how is uh, how did we do in that?" Christian McCaffrey trade. He's like, who was traded away and what did they get in exchange? Because every now and then you just get the highlights of how well he performs or has been performing healthy MVP caliber candidate. And I just have to sit there and tell him, yeah, it, it's not good for the Panthers. Anyways, folks, that's all. All for today's episode. I'll see you back either Sunday night or Monday when I record the follow-up. Y'all have a good one. Mm-hmm.